In this episode, I'm gonna show some really cool features for doing virtual staging that you can take into Photoshop and have complete control of what's going on with your render. So after you can then adjust some shadows and whatnot. Let's take a look, for instance, at this first example here. And this is the finished image, but if we take a look at the original image, this is what it was. So I virtually staged it, but notice something here. There's some layers here and I didn't create that. Instead, what we have is our furniture layer that was popped in, but then also there's a separate layer for shadow. And this is in Photoshop, it's very high resolution. I was able to take that and then do some geometric correction with my own layer. But the thing is, if I didn't like the shadows, for instance, I could adjust it, but there's more to it than that. There's a lot more that we can do also with new lighting features that are out there, and you can get started with this for free, of course. Using Apply Design, you know that's my favorite uh, virtual staging software out there. I have all other episodes on using that, so I have links down in the description for this video to get you started on that. Here, though, I want to show some of the changes that have come out recently. And this is what it looked like when I was working with it, when I was building it out. And obviously this looks like a pre-rendered virtual stage. And if you've never done something like this before, you basically just drag and drop items in there and then you can move those items around how you like. You can see that I added this flooring over here. I can change a bunch of stuff with it. The red area is showing me where it's cut off because I had it go larger than I needed to, and that's okay, it cuts it off fine. But anyways, when you're done with this, you would render it, and when you render it, then you get something like this. We'll just zoom in here just a little bit on this, and you can see there's something that's different here. So now, when you after you've done rendering it, you could just download the render, that's typically just your JPEG, and you'd be done. But there's so much more control before doing that. Now, before downloading your render, if you did want to go the JPEG route, they have a couple more features where you can adjust the brightness of the furniture, and you can also adjust the furniture shadow. But I wouldn't worry about that so much because I like to download the Photoshop file, which you can do now by going to Download Raw Files. When you click on that, they used to have before, and they still have it, where you could download a PNG of just the furniture layer, but that would have the shadows in it. So that made it harder then to edit just the shadows itself. Now though, you can select PSD. So PSD is the Photoshop file, and then when you download it, this is what you have, a multi-layered, uh, Photoshop file that then you can work with. Now, here it wasn't that big of a deal. The shadows did a really good job. The lighting looks correct with where the windows are, so their AI engine got all that done correctly. But let's take a look at this example here. So this is a very, very simple, empty bedroom. I'll show you the before picture, which was this, and then after the virtual staging, it's here, but there's a lot of mistakes. Now, I could have done a much better job with this lamp. It doesn't look realistic, and that's just how I placed it and how I sized it. So that's my mistake. But look at these other mistakes. Let's go up here. Look at that shadow up there. Well, it wasn't in the before picture, and these shadows down here, they don't make sense either. So something is wrong there. Now, this type of stuff happens when you've got multiple lighting sources. So what's happening here that's confusing this is you have light sources coming from this room nearby, and then you have two lighting sources of natural light here. There's another lighting source here, and I'll get to that in just a second because there's also a new feature on that. But what I can do now is I can say those shadows look unrealistic. So here's the shadow layer. So I can leave that on, but then I can add a layer mask to it. So I can go to layer, layer mask, and then reveal all. With that layer mask then, I could use the eraser tool. And with the eraser, I can decide, I'll use like, let's say a 30% flow, select it up here. And I can erase then some of this out of there. It's like, oh, I don't need that shadow here. So let's just erase that out of there. Boom, gone. These should be completely gone. So I'll just take an eraser, 100% flow, and get rid of those. So you can see it gives me a lot of flexibility. So this is how it would have looked if I would have downloaded just the JPEG. And also, if I had downloaded just the furniture layer, the shadows are already tied into the PNG, but having it as a separate layer, I'm able to edit it, and then I can decide how much of the shadows I want to add or I want to remove. So that's one example and one great benefit of having this capability. 
And you've got then a high resolution image that you can decide to do even more with. You could add other adjustment layers. Say that, you know what, that this furniture that they have here, maybe that should be brighter. Well, you can add your own adjustment layer and clip it to it. So you could go to layer, new adjustment layer and brightness contrast layer. And then using this little tool here, you can clip it to that furniture layer and then add your own brightness just to that. Now it's clipped to that, so it's not affecting the shadows at all. So you've got a lot of control. Okay, so that's the basis of it, but let's take a look at another example showing another feature. So if we go to this bedroom here, notice that there's some more layers that are in here. Now. These layers known as light and exposure are really there to brighten it up. So this was how the room looked before. And then once it was virtually staged, this is it. So I wanted to make it look like a child's room. Now, once again, the furniture is a separate layer. So you can see there's shadow, but then there's this other layer of light and exposure. And with those other layers, and the exposure layer is just an adjustment layer, and they just uh, change the gamma on it to brighten it up. But with these other layers, you've got a lot more control also. But that, when I reached out to Apply Design, they basically said, well, they can sometimes be there, sometimes not, depending on if you had adjusted the exposure of the furniture layer or whatnot. I didn't find that to be the case. What I did find to be the case is when a the property itself had lamps involved. So let's take a look at this in Apply Design. In Apply Design, this is the working model of where I created this. I put in this bed here, you can see, and all this other stuff here that I decorated. But over here, I've got this lamp, and notice now these lamps have a bulb. So if you select that, they have this feature here of where you can enable the lamp lighting, and where you can then enable this as being strong or soft. So I can have, for instance, soft lighting, change the lighting there, I can change it to strong lighting, and then I can change if I want it to be warm or cool. It seems that whenever that's in there, for any image in the property, then I get these extra layers here, which are the light and exposure. And the light, by the way, is just a 50% gray that they changed into an overlay. If this were to be in normal mode, you see it's 50% gray, and it's basically dodged and burned uh, automatically by their software. So anyways, we'll change that back to uh, overlay blending mode. But either way, the more layers, the better, because if I didn't want those layers, then I could just shut them off. I don't have to worry about being tied to the PNG, but I did like those. I thought it did a really good job. More so to the point, I now have extensive flexibility. Look at the mistake down here. It isn't part of their render necessarily. It should have really blocked that out because that's part of that sunbeam that was coming in through the window. So now I could take this layer down here and I could just, let's say, duplicate it just so that it becomes non-destructive. I did Control J. And now what I can do is, since I'm working on just that layer, I could take and maybe do a content aware fill. So let's say that I just turn this layer on only by itself. And I went in here and I selected this and I said to go edit, fill, and then content aware. And filled in a good section of that. And now if I turn the other layers back on, now it's gone. So I have this flexibility to say, you know what, I've got these other layers on top. I didn't download just the JPEG and try to futz with it. I was able to then have control over all these layers. Also the shadow. The shadow layer here is at 50% opacity. What if I wanted more shadows? I can just control that myself. Now, I'd never have them that high, but once again, like I did before, I can also erase. For instance, there's a lot of shadow that's over here on the side of this headboard. So what I would do is go to layer, layer mask, and then reveal all, and then take an eraser and then just tap some of that out there. That just seemed to be a little too much shadow. So this is before and this is after. So I've got this extensive flexibility. New feature, it's automatically added to anything you do in Apply Design. And no, I don't work for Apply Design. This is just something that I use. You can try it for free. And then after that, it's like about $7 an image. That's what I do for all my virtual staging. And once again, if you're not familiar with any of this, take a look down in the description for this video for links to other tutorials I have on starting from scratch doing this virtual staging. And of course, you can take a look at my Pro Exterior course, which talks about not just the virtual staging, but a lot of other editing as well.